You mentioned that Ethiopia, some high-level Italian delegation is supposed to go to Ethiopia for this working visit. There's this book out. It's called The Arrival of the Prince. And um, they said visit out. It's like a Christian bookstore. Some of the content in it is creationism, Yeshu, the cave of the red serpent, the Hadamic language, Lucifer's DNA, the hierarchy of angels, ancient stone tablets, Acts in Ethiopia, St. Mary of Zion Church, links of interest, and there's a blog, like all on this page right here. We looked up Ethiopia, Lucifer, Axum, A-K-S-U-M, and A-X-U-M. It's actually under A-X-U-M, but I'll turn to spelling A-K-S-U-M. So this, in the book Arrival of the Prince, much of the action takes place in and around Axum, Ethiopia. I picked Axum, the author says, because it is the oldest known Christian nation in Africa. Axum or Axum is a city in the northern Ethiopia, in northern Ethiopia, named after the long lived kingdom of Axum, a naval and trading power that ruled from the region circa 400 BC into the 10th century, nearly a millennia and a half. The kingdom was occasionally referred to in medieval writings, that's European writings, as Ethiopia. Located in the Mahakalanya zone of the Tigray region near the base of the Adwa Mountains, this town has an elevation of 2130 or 2130 meters. It was the center of the eventual Christian marine trading power, the Aksumite Kingdom, which antedated the earliest mentions in Roman era writings around the time of the birth of Jesus in good correlation to the expansion of Rome into northern Africa and later it developed into the Christian kingdom was a quasi ally or quasi ally of Byzantium against the day's Persian Empire Direct historical matters are, however, little known, primary sources being, in the main, limited to ancient church records. It is believed it began a long, slow decline after the 7th century due to partly Islamic groups contesting trade routes. Eventually, Axum was cut off from its principal markets in Alexandria, Byzantium, and southern Europe, and its trade share was captured by Arab traders of the era, which dovetails well with the Arab ethnic traditions and historical reputation as traders, and we want to highlight slave traders as well. The kingdom of Axum also quarreled with Islamic groups over religion. Eventually, the people of Axum were forced south, and hence their city and civilization declined slowly but surely. As the kingdom's power declined, so did the influence of the city, which is believed to have lost population in the decline similar to Rome and other cities thrust away from the flow of world events. The last known nominal king to reign was crowned circa 10th century, but the kingdom's influence and power ended long before that. Its decline in population and trade then contributed to the shift of the power center of the Ethiopian Empire so that it moved further inland and bequeathed its alternative place name Ethiopia to the region and eventually the modern state. Based on figures from the Central Statistical Agency in 2005, Aksum has an estimated total population of 47,320 of whom 20,774 were males and 21,898 were females. 75% of the population in the city are members of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. 
the remainder of the population is Sunni Muslim or Entei, Protestant and other non-Orthodox Christians. Aksum Airport, where Father Gelmadi greeted Gideon Law and Myla De Nachi, he offered them both diplomatic immunity and religious asylum in the St. Mary's of Zion Church. And then another view right here, this is a, a pretty good picture right here. This is the aerial view from behind the St. Mary of Zion Church in Oxen. Crowds of fanatical Christians, Muslims, and Jews surrounded the venerable old church. In the book, The Arrival of the Prince, the church erected concrete and steel barricades around its compound. The book also describes tents and camps across from the church and extending up the side of the hill in the background. Now, it doesn't go into some of the details of this book, but it does give a good overview. Remember, this is, this is subtitled on the internet, Axum, Ethiopia, is the setting for the final battle or battle between Lucifer and God. The final battle between Lucifer and God is in Aksum. It is in Ethiopia. This is, this is so very important when you see these world events. Now this book is by James Rutledge. You understand? 2007-2008. Very recent book, but so far from what we read, all the facts are intact. And it's very important that they start out, um, James Rutledge says in the book, Arrival of the Prince. Much of the action takes place in and around Aksum, Ethiopia. Now, he says that he picked James Rutledge, he picked Aksum because it is the oldest known Christian nation in Africa. Isn't it Aksum the same area, I think, in Ethiopia where they said that they won't build or they won't allow a mosque to be built? I don't know if this is still today, but we saw this fairly recently. I think it's Aksum, somewhere in northern Ethiopia, I think it's Aksum, that they won't allow a mesquite or a Muslim, Sunni Muslim or whatever mosque to be built until a church, an Ethiopian church, is in Mecca. So they're saying that we'll allow you to build, you understand, a mosque in Aksum when you allow an Ethiopian church you understand? An orthodox church at that, the Tawahid Obeyta Christian Malet, in Mecca. Until that time, you can't build, you understand, a mosque. So it's kind of very interesting. When you look at the population, they said that 70% of that city, you understand, is still Christian, is Ethiopian, belongs to the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. This is a very interesting article, but I have found it previously. You know, and they say, as seen in the New York Times, there's probably some more information about that. Yovers. Now, there's another page. We got another page right here that we'll just like to go to. This is the arrival of the prince. And this is a subtitle from the book. It says, The Story of Divine DNA and the Antichrist. And there's a little highlight here on the Google where it says, On the steps of the venerable St. Mary of Zion Church in Oxum, Ethiopia, scientists first happened on to Lucifer's efforts with the discovery of 12 dot 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 ellipses. So let's go into this article and find out. There's a couple of other, you know, um, but it says this specifically St. Michael who threw Lucifer Satan out of heaven. So there's a whole bunch of links. There's about 852 links on the Google, you understand, for Ethiopia, Lucifer, Aksum, Aksum, spelled both ways. But let's go to this page right here. This is the arrival of the prince. This is, you can see the page. It says genetic war. Look at this graphic right here. Genetic war and the arrival of the Antichrist. The blockbuster read of the year. In the best tradition of the Left Behind book series. And so they have a little bit. Here's the basic plot. 
Here's the basic plot. They said it's equal to Dan Brown, Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons. Arthur James Rutledge brings together biblical history, Christian theology, and the science of genetics to create one of the best Christian novels of the decade. We, we definitely are interested in, in, in checking this book out. You understand? Here's the plot. Here's the plot in a, in a, in a nutshell, as they say. The plot. In the arrival of the prince, Arthur James Rutledge weaves a surprisingly believable and scientifically accurate story that chronicles Lucifer's timeless efforts to produce DNA that is compatible with humans. His growing successes lead to a deadly confrontation between the forces of good and evil on the steps of the venerable St. Mary's of Zion Church in Oxum, Ethiopia. 